I'm just gonna go watch a movie. Welcome to Film Slice, where the droplets will never hurt you. Kino Lorber is a boutique Blu-ray company specializing in art house, cult, and repertory cinema. If Criterion was like a name brand prescription, Kino Lorber would be the generic one. More affordable, just as effective, and somewhat lacking in presentation. Three Bravas. A Bay of Blood. When I first started getting interested in Giallo films, after I had watched most of Dario Argento's films, Mario Bava was the first director I pivoted towards, and it's pretty good. We've got a basic storyline where we have a group that is squabbling over an inheritance throughout the movie. There's a high body count, surprisingly gory for the time, it is a prime proto-slasher example. Uh, I really like the ending, strong ending, uh, though it may be divisive for some people. For special features, we have Tim Lucas, author of a book on Mario Bava called All the Colors of Bava. In addition to the commentary, there's also an alternate Euro version. Evil Eye. Mario Bava's first official giallo. When I watched it, I had recently gained somewhat of a solid foundation in the genre, so I thought I was ready for it. Um, to be honest, it felt like watching cinematic vegetables. It's been years since then, and having seen more of the genre and more film in general, I think it's time for a revisit. We have a woman stumbling upon a murder. She investigates further, somehow ties it to an infamous serial killer. But then she realizes the next victim is her. Special features are again pretty skim. We've got an alternate Euro version under the title of The Girl Who Knew Too Much. And in addition, we have an audio commentary by none other than Tim Lucas once again. Black Sunday. Alright, the first non-giallo Mario Bava film I'll be watching. Bava directed a handful of other films but was not credited. Uh, this is his first official one. Formal debut. Having watched the film, I really dug it. I liked the whole gothic vibe and feel of the movie. The story is about a vengeful witch. She comes back via possession of a family descendant. This release, uh, it's pretty skimp. There's not too much on special features other than trailers and stuff. Unfortunately, Tim Lucas was not available for comment. Sci-fi. Cherry 2000. I picked this up because by the, the cover and title, it looked like it would be one of those lost 80s Retro action gems, something like Ninja 3, The Domination, or Miami Connection. No, it's about a man hiring a bounty hunter to find another copy of his sex robot that broke. Move Sans, also known as Bad Blood. We were talking about movies at work when work was still a thing and the topic of Francis Ha came up. It's a great movie. If you haven't watched it, you should check it out. One of the people there mentioned that Francis Ha lifted one of their scenes from this movie. So, piquing my interest, I figured it'd be a good idea to check it out. Having known nothing about this movie before I bought it, in my head, I thought this was going to be like an 80s Francis Ha set in France, spoken in French. But I was surprised to find out that it is in fact about like a dystopian future society. And it goes on about the meaning of love and life and all this other deep stuff. I figured why not? It looks like it'll be good and on the 
Plus side, we have Julia Binochet as one of the leads. She's always good. And the movie director is also known for directing Holy Motors. Special features are kind of scamp as well. We do have a making of documentary, some deleted scenes, and outtakes. Cosmos. So the trailer for this promises trippy shit from the director of Possession. Um, combined with having seen the trailer, I think I don't need much else to be interested in watching this. Will it make sense? I don't know, but it will be a great watch. For the special features, we've got a commentary with historian Daniel Bird. For a movie like this, if it's going to be anything like I'm expecting, it'll be great to have uh, another insight or opinion on the film. We have both a written and a video essay along with an introduction from the director and producer. Hopefully this one's like a, a hidden gem of the sale, who knows. Crime. Killer Cop, a 70s Italian cop thriller, Euro crime drama. The cool person title of the genre is Polizio Teschi. So we've got a version of this film. It looks to be one of the more serious ones I've seen based on the cover, but who knows? This film is based on the 1969 Piazza Fontana bombing in Milan. We have interviews for the special features and a new and improved English subtitle translation with bonus Italian lessons included. Un flick. Un flick. We've got the final film from cool guy crime director Jean-Pierre Melville uh, with his guy Alain Delon as the lead and also with Catherine Deneuve. The plot seems like a group of thieves plan one heist and instead of calling it quits, they proceed to plan and hopefully execute a second one. I'm excited, I already like this director's style. Um, if you haven't watched Les Samurai, that one's a very good one to start with. For the special features, we have a documentary on the director and commentary by Sam Deegan. Let the Corpses Tan. We've got a great film from a pair of directors who are known for their modernized take on the giallo genre. Instead of giallo, this time the directors are using spaghetti westerns, uh, poliziotesky films as their inspiration. And this one's very stylish. If you are looking for somewhat of a coherent plot and story, this one is not. Special features include audio commentary by film critic Alexandra Heller Nicholas and John Edmonds of the Wienland Film Festival. Horror. The Mephisto Waltz. How does Satan apply to this, or is it just a ploy? That's what was going through my head when I was looking at this item based on the cover. Summary is... It seems like it, the summary of this movie reads like it is a body switch movie, not unlike Freaky Friday. In addition, we had two separate audio commentaries, one from a film historian and one from one of the actresses in the movie, Pamela Ferdin. The Pete Walker Collection. I don't really know anything about Pete Walker himself. He, he seemed to cause a stir during his time in the 70s, so that sounds promising. I got this on a recommendation from Michael Keane. The four films themselves are House of Whipcord, The Comeback, Schizo, and Die Screaming Mary Ann. So anyways, yeah, after watching the trailers, it seems like a vibe that I could, I could dig, yeah. I'm not gonna list them all out, but it looks like each of the discs have some semblance of special features. Some have audio commentaries, others have interviews. 
it looks like it looks like it could be a good educational experience or maybe a discovery of a new auteur. Aesthetic. Killer Barbies and Neurosis. We have two films by the auteur Jess Franco. I first saw Venus in Furs on Tubi. He's got an interesting way of constructing constructing things that for me is striking, but everything else outside of that movie was questionable, but I'm glad I watched it, so I picked up two more Franco films. Alright, so Killer Barbies is a revisionist tale of an old dark house thriller. In other words, the Countess eats and sucks out the life of the praying kids that are invading her house. The next one, Neurosis, is also known as Revenge in the House of Usher. It is a, another version of the, the Usher story from Edgar Allan Poe. This one does have a commentary by our boy Tim Lucas. Fascination. Quite possibly the director, Jean Roland's masterpiece. We've got a, a 70s vampire movie. Very stylish. It is about a group of aristocratic women who drank ox blood with sexy results. I picked this up because I first saw his other film, The Nude Vampire, at Fantastic Fest. It was an interesting watch. I like the aesthetics, the plot, not so much, but kind of along the same lines as Venus and Furs and Jess Franco. We'll see what this one has in store. I am kind of excited. For special features, it does have a director's profile and a 20-paged S.A. Goodbye, Emmanuel. This one is supposed to be super sleazy. I haven't seen any of the Emmanuel films before, but that is... I mean, obviously, everyone here looks pretty attractive, so... We'll see what happens. Uh, the story is a love triangle between the titular Emmanuel, her lover, and a film director they meet who takes interest in the couple. Cinematic vegetables. The first serving of our cinematic vegetables is The Sacrifice by Andrei Tarkovsky. Having only seen Stalker was more of an experience as a cinephile. I'll be required to visit it somewhere along down the future, but watching all of his filmography seems like a good idea. It seems like something that is on every film nerd's bucket list. So seeing the sacrifice on sale, picking it up was a no-brainer. Uh, the movie seems to follow a family on a Baltic island and news of World War III breaking out reaches said family. Sounds like a fun time. Okay, so the Blu-ray comes with, it's a two disc set, so it's loaded with features. We've got commentary by Tarkovsky's translator, Layla Alexander Garrett from set, a feature length documentary and an interview with the film's editor, Fritz Lang, The Silent Films. All right, to be honest, I don't really know much about Fritz Lang other than he did Metropolis and he's very influential. Seeing a box set like this is a good time to slightly expand or go beyond uh, one's comfort zone, so to speak. So we shall see what this has in store for us. Like I said, as stated, it is all his silent films. And they're all loaded with features, and my Bergman set is getting lonely. Text to speech error. Te te text to speech error. Buckrow. Weird. Not what it seems to be. The story starts as one thing and then evolves into something, something else. Udo Kier. He's been in a lot of movies I like, so he seems to be a promising sign. On that note, I think it is probably better to go in blind on this one. So the DVD has a making of doc and some deleted scenes. Marijuana, Narcotic, Forbidden Fruit, Volume 4. 
here we have a pair of drug PSA, say no to drugs, anti-drug content that was shown way back when before color was invented. These are fun to watch, sober or not. Uh, it's always interesting to think about the implications that this had that something like this was made back then and it was taken as is very seriously. This looks to be fun. Thanks for watching. Adios. Yeah, see ya.